if you are replacing a light switch, a receptacle, or maybe a light, and the old switch or receptacle didn't have a ground wire, and the new one does, maybe you don't have a ground wire at all, or you want to know how to correctly ground a metal box, I'll answer all of these questions. The focus of the video is for a residential electrical system in the United States. The National Electrical Code, which is also called NFPA 70, is used in the United States. The code is updated every three years. The latest version is 2017. You'll need to find out which version of the code is currently being used by your state or municipality. I live in Pennsylvania. The current version used is 2008, so I must comply with that version of the code. You can look the code up for free on the NFPA website. If the receptacle being replaced does not have a ground prong and the wiring system does not have a ground wire, it is not legal to replace the receptacle with one that has a ground prong unless you comply with the exception allowed by the code. In the near future, I will publish a video on that topic. Let's have a closer look at a three-prong receptacle. Note that there's a mounting strap, that's this metal piece, and it goes through the body of the receptacle. And if you look closely, you can see that when you plug a plug into the receptacle, the grounding prong connects with this strap. And also, the grounding screw is connected onto that mounting strap. The typical cabling found in a residential setting will be type NM. The NM stands for non-metallic and it refers to the sheath and as you can see the sheath is plastic and not metal. It has three conductors. The black is hot, the white is neutral, and the bare copper wire is ground. Green covered wiring is also used as ground. To properly connect the ground on a three-prong outlet, connect a ground wire to the green screw. If the receptacle is mounted on a metal box, use a separate piece of ground wire Fasten it to the metal box um, using a screw or a mounting clip. Then connect all the ground wires. The ground wire from the green terminal on the receptacle. The one that's connected to the metal box. And any ground wires that are connected to the house wiring system. Just wire nut them all together. If the box is plastic, you don't need the extra ground wire connected to the box. You only need to connect the grounding wire that is connected to the green screw on the receptacle to the ground conductors on the house wiring. When the box is closed up, everything metal is connected to the ground conductors on the house wiring system. The metal screws go through the mounting strap on the receptacles and connect it to the metal faceplate. The metal faceplate is connected to the metal box by the two metal screws. If there was a plastic box, plastic can't conduct electricity, so 
it didn't need to be connected to the ground wiring system. Let's take a look and see how a light switch is grounded. There's a metal plate around the toggle switch and it's called a yoke. And if we have a close look at the yoke, you can see that the green grounding screw is attached to the yoke. If the switch that you're replacing doesn't have a grounding wire and you have no house wiring grounding conductor, you may install a new switch that has a grounding wire. You don't have to connect the grounding wire if you meet certain conditions. If the 2008 version of the code applies, the switch plate must be plastic. If the switch plate is metal, then the circuit must be GFCI protected. The 2011 and 2014 codes are a little different than the 2008. The 2011 and 2014 code also says that the switch must be a replacement. Unless the yoke on the switch is plastic, both the switch plate and the screws that hold it in place must be plastic. If the switch's yoke is plastic, then only the switch plate has to be plastic. You don't need a plastic switch plate if the switch is mounted on a plastic box or if the circuit is GFCI protected. If you can meet those conditions that I just reviewed, and you don't have a ground wire in your house wiring system, you don't have to connect a ground wire to the ground screw, or if the switch you're installing has a ground wire, you don't have to connect it to anything. If the house wiring has a ground conductor, then the switch is connected the same way that the receptacle was connected. Let's sum things up by looking at the entire ground circuit. The ground wire would leave the circuit breaker panel and anytime it entered a metal box it would be connected to the metal box and any metal contained within the box, uh, such as a receptacle or a light switch or perhaps a light fixture. If there's a plastic box on the circuit, the ground wire doesn't have to be connected to the plastic box because plastic can't conduct electricity. However, any metal parts inside of the box would need to be connected to the ground wire. For safety reasons, it's very important to correctly connect the ground wire in a circuit. If you'd like to understand how that ground wire functions, click on the channel name Know How Now to find a video that explains its purpose. I hope you find this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated, and thanks for watching.